Barangay Tabile, a hinterland barangay of the municipality of Katmon. This is the second time that we have visited the place. We went here previously to see the field of growing kabog or millet grains. And this time is to witness the harvest of this elusive crop, the well-loved heritage crop of the northern Cebu province, the kabog or millet grains. Philippines, being a tropical country, is blessed with very rich soil and good biodiversity, which is home to several indigenous species of plants and vegetables, used as staple food by the native Filipinos. Indigenous plants are those that thrive naturally in a region in which they evolved. These different species of plants, fruits, vegetables, and grains eventually became part of the culture and cuisine of the indigenous people. One particular indigenous grain is the native millet or the kubo grains. This particular plant thrived naturally in these hinterland areas and are endemic to the place whose discovery lends to the legend that tells the story of its origin, being discovered by a farmer inside a cave consumed by native bats or what we have locally known as the kabog. These grains here grew wildly as a grass a long, long time ago, and the locals have no idea if it is fit to be eaten or not. But seeing that the grains are being consumed by the bats, it is already a telltale sign of its edibility. People of the olden times relies on the birds and animals to check if a certain fruit or plant is poisonous to eat or not. So the farmers tried to cook the grains and eventually discovered the best way to prepare it. And then the rest is history. So together with the people from Cebu Farmers Market, Cafe I, and Slow Food Sugbo, we visited the fields of the Cabo grains to witness how the locals manually harvested their produce. It's a lot of harvest. It's a brown one. It's a Okay. I We are here in a kabug farm. The grains are now ripe for harvest. Come with me. We are going to manually harvest the kabug grains. <laughs> You know the cricket is there again. The welcome song of nature. <laughs> there. Oops. We're going to harvest. This is the ripe grain of millet. grains of kapok here in this field in the middle of the mountain so the grains are not gonna be harvested all at once okay some matures early others mature late so this part here here where I stood the grains are still green so it's not ready for harvest yet but on that part there where my groups are harvesting already the ripe grains of millet so here I was able to harvest some here the golden grains of millet or the kabug as we have locally known here in our locality okay so this is a grain that is comparable to quinoa 
it, it has high nutritional value it has so many health benefits and it is believed to have um, cancer anti-cancer properties indigenous and traditional edible plant species are disappearing at an alarming rate as production of these crops before were not being promoted and government encourages cultivation of higher yielding varieties of grains such as rice and corn and the traditional and historical crops like kabog was disregarded and overlooked the very reason why it's very elusive in the market Aside from the kabog, there is another variety of grain being cultivated here, the dawa or bird seed. Farming of indigenous food crops is more environment friendly because indigenous plants require less water, chemical fertilizer, and pesticides simply because these plants have adapted naturally to the local climate and soil conditions where they naturally grow. In effect, Many insects that act as pollinators will be spared, creating a good and healthy environment for all sorts of insects, helping keep the soil rich while nourishing the food that grow. But now, Cabo Grains regained its popularity. Thanks to Cebu Farmers Market, Cafe I, Slow Food Sugbo, and the local government unit of the municipality of Katmon, being supported also by the province of Cebu, promoting the kabog's nutritional value, as it is found out in the studies being a very healthy alternative to rice. It is very rich in dietary fibers, fatty acids, proteins, essential amino acids, phenolic acids, tocopherols, carotenoid, and phytochemicals. Its antioxidant properties is higher compared to other grains and cereals. And its production is providing livelihood to small-scale farmers and their families. We are harvesting manually, just like the farmers did during their harvest. There is no tractor involved, no machineries. So here, just like the olden times using just a stick or with just your bare hands okay during the harvest season the farmers need to choose or to select the really ripe grain okay so because the harvest will be affected the yield will be affect affected after harvesting we went back downhill to see how the grains are being processed After the harvest, these stalks will be dried under the intense heat of the sun, just like the other grains, to get rid of the moisture. These are being trampled manually to separate the grains from the stalk. This process is called pagiok in our Visayan term. Once the grains have been separated from the stalks, then they are pounded using the wooden mortar and pizzle to get rid of the husks or hull. This process is then called paglubok. Okay, wala pa kung before when I was talking to the Gucci. Like uh, student engineers, we're trying to invent a milling system, but the kabo is very small. Na wapag sila kakuan na in, press down nila ba? Hindi mo powder. Too much ba? It's always too much. So ang successful group ang kanin yun. Native plants like these kabo grains is very important as it will contribute greatly to food sufficiency, nutrition, and household income supplement. 
it is therefore the right time to look back and reserve a place for our indigenous crops and our dining table, for our health and well-being as well as that of our planet. We need to promote the richness of our Philippine agriculture and preserve indigenous crops so that the next generation will know them, just as we and our elders did.